So you know you end up with a blog article title like this long when you started with a topic and you actually ended up with two topics. It got jammed into one talk you're going to try and do in 10 minutes. So that's what this is. This is Java 8 development. Really, it's two things. One is doing Java development in Linux WSL using Visual Studio Code to do Java development. And the other is doing Java 8 development in Linux with Visual Studio Code. And the reason that's hard is because the Java toolkit that is that you can install into Visual Studio Code actually requires Java 11. So there's actually two things here. How to do development under Linux using Visual Studio Code with Java for Java language. And how do we target a different version of Java than is used in the SDK, in the uh, toolbox. So the way this works, kind of, I always start with the way this works, is Visual Studio Code is actually can be deployed in two parts. You can have the GUI part, which uh, runs the GUI. And that runs in Windows. And that's actually, I'm sitting on a Windows machine. And then you can run the VS Code server on the Linux part in WSL on the Linux. And the two of those will talk to each other over a communication pipe. And so the way this works out is the, the easiest way to do this is you, you pull up a WSL Linux command prompt and you type the word code. And it will launch the Windows server and it'll launch the VS Code server on the Linux side. And what this means is we're going to run the GUI up here on the Windows machine, on the Windows GUI. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. And we're going to be able to compile and run all in a Linux process down on the WSL. And we'll be able to run programs and deploy them. Typically, I actually use this for Docker development. So I'll have a WSL command prompt open where I can do some bunch of Docker commands. But I can also do remote deployments and remote compilation on the Linux VM, the WSL Linux VM. And so I can do terminal processes out there. I can now here, we'll talk about this a little bit later, but this is basically Java 11. And I'm not sure this box is real here, but it's Java 11. But we actually want to be able to run the debugger and run any version of Java we want and compile any version of Java we want, independent of the version that we use in the IDE. So the, we're going to do this. You know you're doing this when your Visual Studio instance has this icon here. What that says is I'm remotely connected to a WSL Ubuntu vent, uh, version here. You can also do this like into a cloud instance. You can run the server out there, but I'm just doing this on my local machine. So we're going to install a bunch of extensions and extensions actually get installed in both places when you're doing remote development. So we're going to do the Java extension pack and uh, that's going to be on the VS Code server, and we're going to do the remote enablement extensions locally. So you can't see it here because I made it really tiny. But these all say remote on the local install, and this one says Ubuntu. You know what? Maybe I can make it where you can see it. All right, so you can kind of see that. All right. When we're doing Java development, what's actually going to happen is, and these are kind of process-ish things because I didn't go out and see how many processes there actually were. On the Linux side, you're going to have a VS Code server with a bunch of code in it. You're going to have a Java extensions that actually run Java on Java 11. And every time you need to do a bunch of commands, those Java extensions are basically going to go out and run shell commands or do other things to make your application compile. A lot of what it actually does is shell commands. It'll run shell commands to actually make the compilation. And then you can also do remote debugging with that. Watch on the time here. All right. So the simplest way to do this is you install all the extensions I described above, and I can show that in a minute. And then what we do is, if we want to see how this is really configured, we can do Control Shift P, type Java, and it will, and pull up the Java development kit. And you can see here on my machine, the default VM on the Linux box has to be like Java 11, unless you overwrite it and set in user settings what your Java home is or in one of these environment variables. In my case, I installed Java. 11 and then I installed Java 8 I think and so when you type Java dash version on my Linux machine it's this and so it actually sees it because it's like the current version of Java is Java 11 here so this means I'm using Java 11 to run the Java extensions and toolbox and stuff now what I want to do is I need 
So that's Java 11 for the SDK. What I need to be able to do is, wrong one, no, that is the right one. Uh, what I want to be able to do here is I want to be able to tell the server and the Java live Java extensions, I want to be able to tell them what JDKs are available so that if like a Maven project, or in this case, uh, or a Maven project or like a Gradle project, if they need a di different version of Java, that those are available to them. And so it turns out there are actually three settings files. There's on the Windows side, there's a settings file that you can set stuff on the VS Code side in your home directory, there's a settings file that will be picked up by the VS Code server. And then there's also a .VS Code in the project. So we know we want to run Java 8 for our program while having Java 8 and 11 installed here. And we want to do that on the Linux side, which means the only two candidates here are the one in our home directory or the one in the project itself. I found that the only one that actually works is the one in our home directory. And that's great because if I'm working on multiple projects, uh, like different Git repos and stuff, then all those projects will have the, all the JDKs available to them. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna edit this J settings JSON file, the VS code server on the Linux file system in the home directory. We're gonna edit that and tell it what JDKs exist. In my case, I actually use this .VS code uh, file exclusions and what that means is I got a bunch of like temporary dot files that I never want to check in if I put those exclusions in here it'll work across all my projects although good git hygiene says you do it in the git git ignore right so uh, let me think what else have I got here so that's what we're going to do and I will show this in a minute basically we're going to do the control shift p thing you type in pref and you can see there's a whole bunch of settings the user settings which is on the windows machine the workspace settings, which is the dot VS code in the project, and the remote settings, which would actually be uh, in the remote side because your code's actually sitting on the Linux file system. And then in the home directory for Ubuntu, or basically the WSL, my user ID and that WSL thing, that home directory, that's actually the one we want to do. So it turns out when you click on that, there's actually, you pull up those settings, there's actually three scope user, which is local, remote which is you in your home directory on the remote box and your workspace. We're going to click on this remote one here. And then what you'll see is something that says edit settings.json. It'll edit the settings.json for the Windows side, the settings.json for the Ubuntu side, and the settings.json in the workspace, which is sitting in the Ubuntu file system. We're going to click here and then click edit settings. And what will happen is a JSON editor will come up. And what we want to do is copy this code into the JSON editor. I'm going to make it bigger. We're going to copy this code in the JSON editor. And so what this and what this says is I've got Java 8 and Java 11 um, installed in and Java 8 is known as 1.8, even though it's called Java 8. And that says I got these two installed, and this is the normal location where they get installed under Ubuntu on the Linux file system. So that's really it. That will let me run. Java applications with whatever version I want while using VS Code Server with Java 11. And I've only got like two minutes left on this to make this work. So this is the screen I showed you, right? This is the Java development kit itself, it or Java, which JDK we're going to use. And it turns out it's the default for your application and it's what is actually going to be used by the extensions. Um, if, if we go, uh, this is actually the extension pack we're going to install. And I can show you the extensions. If you, you look here, you can actually see, um, if I click this closed, you can see we have some that are locally installed and we have some that are in the WSL Ubuntu, right? So if, um, if, I, if I did that control shift P and I did settings, right? Or I type Java home, you can see that there's the user scope, the remote WSL scope and the workspace scope. We're going to pick the remote WSL scope. We're going to edit the JSONs file and we're going to paste this in. And then even if our, what, depending on whatever we targeted in our palm.xml or our Gradle files, it will find the right JDK here. And how can I show you this? I can show you this. How did I do this last time? Nope, nope. Go here and then you go to Maven and then you go here and you say 
build, compile. Start without debugging. Oh, do Java. And we'll actually run this in Java. And we can see that we're actually running the Java 8. Java 8 OpenJDK. And that's it.